Welcome to Planet Sleep. I'm your host, Josh, and in tonight's episode, I'm going to be whisking you off to the magical Amazon rainforest, one of the most truly unique and beautiful living organisms on the planet. Before we go, though, I want you to take a minute to relax and just breathe. Hopefully you can find somewhere you can lie down or just sit and be quiet for just a little while. My hope is to relax you and put you into a peaceful slumber by the end of the episode. Alright, now that you've taken a few deep breaths, you've found somewhere to relax. Let our journey begin. In the heart of South America, December approaches without snow, but heavy rain. In this vast garden of life and death, a droplet cascades from the canopy of a curling wimba tree. And here the sweltering flora of the Amazonia wraps inside a heady blanket of humidity, chased by the coming rainfall of convergent seasons, assured by the far-off roll of the thunder. The Amazon rainforest experiences on average 108 inches of rainfall per year. With this vast amount of water combined with the rainforest's warm climate year-round, the biodiversity of the Amazon exceeds that of any other location on the planet. 390 billion trees exist here, 30 million people reside here, and 2,000 various species of mammals, birds, reptiles, and amphibians have made the Amazon rainforest their home. It is commonly believed that 1 in 10 of every single species on Earth lives within the magical Amazon rainforest. Although in solitude within this vast rainforest, you are not alone. The plumes of birds dash beams of colors above. The microcosmic world of insects churn the ground below. And with the eyes and ears of each creature attuned to the shifting winds, the rainforest prepares for its rainy season. A giant kumaru tree stands among the luxuriant growth of the forest, one that has stood for decades. And although this rainforest soil lacks nourishment due to the climate's consistent rainfall, washing nutrients away, Alongside the constant threat of deforestation, many of the Amazon's native plants thrive from the fallen leaves of the plants before them, and so on. This cycle of falling biomatter continues to nourish the soil, and so too will the currently thriving plants nourish those that will soon sprout with new life. The soil in which this kumaro tree grows is made up of nutrients that have traveled across the entire earth. The land of the Amazon only cultivates incredible growth because of the traveling soil and sediment from the Andes Mountains and the Sahara Desert. If it weren't for this natural agreement between lands, the rainforest wouldn't be half as grand as it is today. The waterways of the rainy season bring nutrients down from the Andes, all the way from the westernmost side of South America. From here, the thousands of rivers and tributaries that flow distribute these nutrients eastward throughout the Amazon. On the other end of the world, from across the Atlantic Ocean, the heavy desert winds carry the finest bits of dust from the heart of the Sahara, all the way back to the rainforest of South America. And without this intersection of nutrients, the lack of local nutrients in the Amazon wouldn't be enough to sustain the wildlife. Yet the worldwide ecosystem has found a way to support itself, as the Kumaro trees stand tall. It grows in soil sustained by nutrients from different countries, different continents even. The branches carry its leaves and its flowers, and once their season is over, they fall to the earth to begin the cycle all over again. And with every fallen leaf of the forest, a butterfly mimics its pattern, twisting and turning 
the difference between a falling leaf and the flapping of a camouflaged wing becomes indistinguishable. The bark of a tree, the eye of a predator, a kaleidoscope of color. Almost any combination of pattern exists on the canvas of butterfly wings. 7,000 butterfly species exist within the Amazon rainforest. They are active year-round, living in almost every corner of the forest and can be found in rare clusters, flying above river sandbars where mineral deposits rest below. For every color, an Amazon butterfly exists, or in some cases, lack of color. The Hetera Piera butterfly uses the trick of invisibility for most of its wing decor. Categorized as a glass-winged butterfly, the Hetera Piera sports translucent wings outlined in light brown, and two false eyes peer from its posterior golden flush. They carry out most of their daily routines close to the forest floor, eating various berries and the droppings from the animals bustling above. The journey of a single raindrop may take up to 10 minutes to reach the soil as it travels through the rainforest thoroughfare of vegetation, from the emergent layer, the highest canopy layer of the rainforest, all the way down to the forest floor, as is similar for its escape by evaporation. The dense vegetation of the Amazon maintains water within its blanket of leaves. And so the rainforest's covetous water cycle attempts to keep as much water as it can for itself, making it one of the most humid places on Earth. Of the few species who live exclusively on the forest floor, where mud and moisture cover the ground, there exists within the dark shadow of leaves and foliage one of the most elusive creatures of the Amazon. Covered in a coat of brown fur, camouflaged within the mud, and slowly crawling its way across the floor upon its knuckles, you find the meandering giant anteater. Quite a burly animal, at up to 7 feet long and weighing up to 110 pounds. The anteater is closely related to the sloth, and much like its cousin, it inches its way about the forest. With a tube-shaped nose perfect for scrounging the forest floor for ants and termites, this docile beast carefully makes its way around the mud. The strength of its nose is 40 times stronger than that of a man's, and it can smell ants and termites from miles away. As well as they should, since its diet consists of up to 30,000 bugs per day. And what better place to produce the maximum amount of bugs than the hot and humid Amazon rainforest? The giant anteater unleashes its long, sticky tongue to collect the ants, often having to reach into small cracks and crevices throughout the forest, like the hidden pathways of an ant colony as they harvest a plant for its food. Not only can they smell these ants, the highly refined hearing of the anteater can even listen to the hustle and bustle of an ant colony. All of the small clicking and clacking as they work to build their colonies. More often than not, these colonies are often built far into the earth, within holes so small that not even the anteater's tongue can fit. So that's when they use their long claws to dig into the ground and extract the ants. And when they must travel again, they curl their claws back behind their hands and walk across the ground on their knuckles once again. And although they are surrounded by water throughout the Amazon, giant anteaters are actually naturally great swimmers and can traverse wide rivers with ease when they need to investigate the next plot of land. Through this cloistered blanket of leaves, only 2% of the sun's rays will ever reach the forest floor. Much of what occurs in the Amazon rainforest occurs high up in the canopy of trees, as the forest floor is often an ever-changing spectacle, especially as the heavy rainfall season approaches. The canopy layer, which resides just below the highest emergent layer, is home to roughly 80% of all living creatures in the rainforest due to its abundance of fruits and seeds. Various animals find most of their sources of food and shelter here. Up in the canopy, one such animal, a familiar toko toucan, wraps its talons tightly around a twisting branch. One of the most recognizable creatures of the rainforest, the toko toucan, turns its bright yellow bill back and forth 
as it searches for tree berries. He is calm as he hops along the branches. Despite having a wingspan of up to five feet, he often prefers hopping as his mode of transportation rather than flying. His memorable bill is about half the size of his entire body and plays a key role in the toucan's survival. Not only does he use his bill for courtship rituals, self-defense, and even to redirect blood away from its body under the unbearable forest heat, its length is perfect for foraging the food located in hard-to-reach nooks of the canopy. The bird's bright blue eyes catch the purple sheen of a nearby berry, and he stretches his neck to pluck it. Yet, as the toucan grabs the berry in his bill, he knows something is amiss. His eyes were too eager. The berry is far too large for the toucan to swallow. And even worse, the toucan has no teeth to chew his food. But luckily for this clever creature, he has learned to circumvent the problem by tossing the berry high up in the air and catching it. Over and over, the toucan does this until the berry is smashed to pieces and ready for him to enjoy. After his meal, he hops along the branches of the canopy in search of another berry. Hopefully this time, not as large. For species such as the Toko toucan, whose sole survival depends upon the canopy layer of the rainforest, their habitats are constantly threatened by deforestation. Over 17% of the Amazon rainforest has been lost over the years, and much of the deforestation is due directly to human behavior. Cattle ranching and beef consumption, industrial agriculture of soy, clearing land by way of forest fires, and the high demand of hardwood timber have all contributed to the dangerous loss of rainforest. In this vast forest of life and death, the latter continues to pull ahead, and what life remains continues on. In addition to the loss of wildlife due to deforestation, humans are also at risk. Not just any humans, though, but the uncontacted indigenous tribes of the Amazon who have held out for so long through countless years of industrialization. These tribes, many of them not discovered until the 1980s, have lived quietly within the cover of the Amazon canopy for lifetimes. It's estimated that over a hundred uncontacted tribes exist within the Amazon, and most of them have never experienced the world beyond their jungles. They have been threatened, now more than ever, by the expanding destruction of deforestation, at the end of a rancher's gun barrel, or by the spread of disease, these uncontacted tribes, some of who are meant to be protected by law, are often making contact with the outside world as industrialization encroaches into the rainforest. Many of these tribes have kept to themselves for so long that not much is known about them. Flyovers by government helicopters have taken pictures of the indigenous people in an attempt to gauge their locations and populations. Many are seen hidden behind the rainforest foliage, covered in paint, dressed in cloth, and equipped with bow and arrows. A way of life preserved by necessary isolation. As they remain uncontacted, it has been difficult for state governments to collect population numbers and the exact effects of deforestation has had on these tribes. Yet some are believed to consist of their last remaining members. Nearly 13,000 years ago, what was once the virgin terrain of the Amazon experienced its first contact with humans. The burly trees and the bustling animals of the rainforest had been in full control of Mother Nature until humans arrived with knowledge of cultivating the land. Much like our current effect on our surrounding environments today, these early tribes of hunters and gatherers forever changed their environment, yet not for the worse. Their bags brought new seeds from beyond the rainforest, and their hands and minds sowed the land with foreign plants. It is commonly believed that the biodiversity of the Amazon today owes much of its credit to the early settlers of the land. The vegetation brought with them, directly or indirectly, contributed to a new Amazon, causing new animals to migrate in search of new fruits, and the butterfly effect of migrating seeds finding new soil forever changed the rainforest. As the plants and animals of the rainforest changed, human life within the rainforest quickly changed as well. 
What pockets of concealed jungle that had become havens for many of these tribes eventually ran its course. Tribesmen began disappearing, and others were killed outright. The threat of European colonialism, as the tribes quickly understood, deemed the Amazon a place of danger. The pulsing earth of the Amazon, with all its bursting wildlife and flora, became a place to be feared. Not for the hungry jaguar or the caiman crocodile, but for the scourge of man. Many of the early tribes up and left once they caught wind of European activity, while others were subjected to the horrors of enslavement, war, and disease brought by the hungry opportunists. And some of these horrors, sadly, still resonate within the rainforest today. Life within these uncontacted tribes works with simplicity. Consisting of hunters, gatherers, and farmers, the tribes survive as they always have, living off of the fat of the land. Fishermen catch arapaima, the largest freshwater fish in the Amazon rivers, and eat for days on its offerings. Gatherers find various fruits offered by the rainforest's endless vegetation, or the golden treat of a turtle egg. Hunters search the skies for plump birds, and farmers wait patiently for a signal of a rainy season before tilling their soil. And with everything the Amazon provides for them, they do their best to return the favor. Conservationists at heart, living by the code of natural law, these tribes do their best to maintain the earth around them. For what is taken, a turtle egg, a freshwater fish, a cashew nut, or a bird, is returned by the simple act of preservation. Keeping gluttony in check and maintaining balance within the ecosystem is a common goal among many of these tribes. Rather than a collective agreement between tribes, this ideology seems to be as easily understood as water is wet and fire is hot. Give back to the earth what is taken. So in the act of protecting these uncontacted tribes of the Amazon, we also, in turn, protect the very nature of the Amazon itself. The most devastating scourge against the indigenous tribes of the Amazon has been disease. Since the immune systems of the uncontacted tribes have developed against the tide compared to the rest of the industrialized world, they cannot withstand the same diseases the rest of us can. Not to mention the rest of the world's access to modern healthcare lends another advantage that the indigenous people do not have access to. As the rest of the modernized world began paying closer attention to these tribes in the 1980s, contact with the indigenous people introduced diseases into the tribe, which had never been experienced before, such as measles, influenza, tuberculosis, and hepatitis. Not only would these diseases be near impossible to treat within the tribe, but by the nature of transmission, some of the illnesses would last for years circulating within the tribe and killing at times the majority of its people. In response to this, the Brazilian government has set legal boundaries for loggers, ranchers, and oilers' exploration into tribal land. Despite these attempts to preserve the uncontacted tribes, many are constantly threatened by industrial activity that continues to encroach into the rainforest. In desperation, tribesmen have been known to attack local ranchers unprovoked, in fear of the tragic fate that might find them the same as their neighbors, and vice versa. Local workers have been known to kill the tribe's people in defense of their land and cattle. And since the documentation of these crimes come down to he said or she said, within the secret corners of the jungle, tensions continue to rise while industrial activity consumes the once furtive land of the Amazon. Outside of the settled hunters, gatherers, and farmers, there are those who prefer the nomadic lifestyle of the Amazon. They journey far and wide, hunting, trapping, and collecting as they go, surviving off of the lands ahead of them, and their journeys suffer a greater threat. For them, there is not much benefit from a government agency mapping out the protected areas when their lifestyles require movement beyond an established plot of land. 
When first contacted in the 1980s by Brazil's National Indian Foundation, the nomadic Pirapcura people numbered roughly 20 people. This small tribe lived quietly along their nomadic pathways as they had for centuries before, gathering food as they traveled and sleeping on the forest floor. Not 20 years later, two of their men walked out of the rainforest to contact members of the Indian Foundation. One of them was ill and needed to be hospitalized immediately. With what little communication they could hold between their different languages, the Pirapkura men explained their situation. The people of their tribe had been killed by white men, and the local loggers continued to block their nomadic pathways through the forest. And from this, their hunting and gathering suffered greatly. And although the Indian Foundation couldn't gather how many of the Pirapkura survived, they assumed those two men who ventured out of the forest and contacted them out of pure desperation were the last to survive. The tragedy of the Pirapkura people is only a small glimpse into the destruction of the Amazonian tribes. And with at least 100 uncontacted tribes within the Amazon, this similar story is shared by many. Dating back to the era of rubber boom in the 1860s, when the indigenous people of the areas were often enslaved and killed, these horrific memories run deep. By oral history within the tribes, these atrocities of the Amazon are passed down with each generation. Little is forgotten. They maintain a healthy distrust for the opportunists who wreak havoc on their land, as history continues to repeat itself time and time again within the rainforest. We often think of the Amazon rainforest as a mythical place, existing outside of day-to-day -day human life, as a place where exotic animals travel along the waterways and countless flowers burst beneath a gentle sun hidden above rain clouds. We hear short proverbs like, the Amazon is the lungs of the world. And it seems like a place so far away, like a place we go to in our dreams. We often forget, beyond the long-term effects of climate change and animal extinction, that immediate lives are at risk. Human lives. Those who have kept a traditional way of life while the rest of the world moves forward at one massive leap per second. Where in the depths of the rainforest, time stands still. The cover of trees and flora in the Amazon rainforest preserve a form of human life rarely seen, as well as the ways of natural wildlife never to be seen again, all on a scale unlike anywhere else on the planet. For a place subject to so much conflict, life manages to carry on through one rainy season to the next. Despite violence and death, the lungs of the world continue to breathe. This episode of Planet Sleep is brought to you by HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh cuts out stressful meal planning and grocery store trips so you can enjoy cooking and get dinner on the table in just about 30 minutes or less. HelloFresh offers 50 menu and market items each week, including ready-to-eat salads, sandwiches, and soups. There's something for everyone to enjoy with all recipes designed and tested by professional chefs and nutritional experts to ensure deliciousness and simplicity. HelloFresh's high-quality fresh ingredients are sourced directly from growers and delivered from the farm to your door in under a week, contact-free, of course. I love HelloFresh because I save so much money and time by not having to go to the grocery store and get all the ingredients and then come home and slave over a meal and then clean up after. With HelloFresh, it's 28% cheaper than shopping at your local grocery store and 72% cheaper than a restaurant meal without sacrificing the quality. One of my favorite things about HelloFresh is its flexibility. If you need to customize your order on the app, you can within minutes. You can easily change your delivery day, food preferences, plan size, or even just skip a week whenever you need. Enjoy a wide variety of easy, delicious options for all three meals a day, plus every snack and special treat in between within the HelloFresh market. Try HelloFresh's quick and easy meals, 15 to 20 minute dinners, breakfast on the go, and more easy options perfect for your busy lifestyle. So go to HelloFresh.com slash PlanetSleep14 and use code PLANETSLEEP14 for up to 14 free meals plus free shipping. Again, go to hellfresh.com slash PLANETSLEEP14 
and use code PLANETSLEEP14 for up to 14 free meals, plus shipping. Akin to the indigenous peoples of the Amazon is a creature whose poisonous skin is known to be used for weaponry. Often found displaying an array of bright colors, the poison dart frog is an endemic species found in the humid tropical areas of the Amazon rainforest, getting their name from their toxic secretions used to poison the tip of a blow dart. Their reputation across the rainforest is that of danger. Although only a few are known to be used for this use, some species of poisonous dart frogs are understood to have very little toxicity or none at all. And while their extremely bright, beautiful colors might be thought of as a way to attract predators, their aposematic displays are actually a way to deter them. These bright colors are naturally understood to be a warning signal for other wildlife and protect both the frog and any potential predators from harm. These frogs are known to be extremely small. Most of them grow no larger than an inch or two, and they weigh no more than an ounce. One with a psychedelic pattern of blue, orange, and black hops from the bed of a hardy leaf to the wet surface of a riverbank rock. He waits patiently for a cloud of fruit flies to pass by. He has found safety here, knowing the hawk that flies above is too smart to dare eat his flashy colors. A black shade of fur swings from branch to branch. Strong hands grab each one, shaking the leaves of every tree it traverses. The howler monkey is not afraid to make himself known up in the canopy layer of the rainforest. Its name is no mystery either. For what better name for an animal than its most identifiable and most irritable trait? It's howl. Sounding similar to that of a heavy metal vocalist, their howls consume their entire habitat. A deafening call. Considered the loudest mammal on the planet, the howler monkey can be heard up to three miles away. And like humans, the howler monkey has a hyoid bone located within its throat that helps the monkey project its howl, in addition to the bloated throat that expands with each call. He stops to pick a leaf and chew on it, with his prehensile tail that wraps around a branch, he hangs upside down from the tree and gives his neighbors another howl. Territorial in nature, this monkey makes himself known to every other creature in the vicinity. Not only does he call out to identify himself, he also claims this tree is his own. Luckily for the neighbors, the howler monkey sleeps for 15 hours a day, meaning the cacophony will have to end eventually. Over a dozen different species of monkeys live in the canopy layer of the Peruvian Amazon. Regardless of their facade of shelter, a hundred feet above the forest floor, where safety is presumed, predators are no strangers to the skies as well. Predatory birds often survey the trees for their next meal. The most formidable predator of the rainforest sky is the rare harpy eagle. They look for a bright coat of fur or the shake of a suspicious branch and wait for the opportune moment to strike. The eagle's jet black eyes rest behind a carnivorous beak. The end of its upper tip turns downward in the shape of a hook, suitable for devouring prey. As it glides high above the canopy, with an eyesight of what each branch beholds, its wings spread wide, showing off its plume, a funereal feathers, black to white. The look of this somber creature fits the grim narrative of its nature. The harpy eagle, this bird of prey, whose talons can stretch up to seven inches and whose wingspan can spread over seven feet, has an advantageous size for plucking a lone monkey from its branch and devouring it. Or perhaps the monkey is too swift and the eagle searches for a helpless sloth. Harsh and fierce, yet never selfish, the harpy eagle kills its prey and carries much of it back to the nest to feed its young. They build their nests in high, protective trees with sufficient vantage points, while both the female and male protect the nest and provide for their offspring, yet only the mother feeds the young. And so another generation of survival, another generation of flying predators to control the canopy. The number of harpy eagles in the rainforest not only indicates their own survival, but also indicates the amount of prey existing within the canopy. 
This tally is crucial for cataloging the eagles as well as the prey that lives within their habitat. Listen closely. Beside the boisterous calls of the howler monkey, mating season is here. The eager birds of the Amazon mean to meet. And soon, before the season of heavy rainfall, their calls fill each branch of broadleaf foliage. From one to the next, some close, some far, high and low. The rainforest before you, seldom silent, echoes with the calls of companionship. Each call a different cadence, each call a plea. The rolling storm clouds form in a churning sky, and with the coming rain, by tomorrow, life will change. The bright dance of a band-tailed mannequin catches the eye. Although what may seem like a playful dance is actually one of survival, his gaudy caper lines the branch of a spotless home within the high foliage of sun and greenery, all to impress his potential mate. From head to toe, he wears the plume of bright gradient, red to yellow, with wings of black. His plume may be impressive, yet his dance is the truest test of attraction. Back and forth, he shifts to the music of his call, to the music of his peers. Their dances, too, herald the coming of rain. Hurried, his dance must win the heart of a mate, spectating from across the chasm of leaves, where another droplet falls. Or if his dance fails to win her over, his harrowing heart must await yet another season to find a suitable mate. As the rain begins to pour, their calls of love change into a plea of desperation. Beside the distinct chirping and squawking of birds, somewhere between the noise comes the curious voice of a human, uncanny in its delivery, strange and choppy. Perhaps it speaks the language of the indigenous people, but you know it is unlike the regular call of birds or the true voice of a human. It sounds hoarse, curious and odd among the rest of the canopy birds. It dons a white leathery face around circular eyes on either side of its head, and in between lies its downturned beak of white and black, giving it the look of a beard. While red, yellow, and blue make up the colors of its plume, their stereotypical perch seen in movies and television is the broad shoulder of a one-eyed pirate. As it speaks of gold and buried treasure, sometimes accidentally revealing the secrets of a captain who talks to himself. This scarlet macaw's reputation precedes itself, iconic not only by its look, but its ability to mimic the human voice. In a fate of irony, this odd yet memorable trait has unfortunately become a contributor to the bird's peril. Its ability to speak has made the scarlet macaw a beloved pet around the world, and has made this popular bird subject to the international pet trade. U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has continued to protect the habitats of these animals as their numbers shrink. Luckily, the Amazon continues to be the safest haven for the macaws to live deep within the woods, while their numbers dwindle beyond the rainforest. Habitat loss and pet trading are the two major contributors to the disappearance of the scarlet macaw, and many local governments have worked towards reforestation in hopes of bringing their numbers back. As highly social creatures, they can often be found in large groupings upon rocks or within the canopy of trees, their bright plumage making them easy to spot among the monotonous greenery of the forest. Throughout their long lives, sometimes living up to 50 years in the wild and 75 years in captivity. These loving birds forge lifelong, monogamous bonds with each other and often live in family groups. They communicate with each other not by speaking human languages, unfortunately, but by a resounding that can be heard for miles. Their diet, while mostly vegetarian, consists of plants, insects, and the endless fruits of the forest. Along with a strange behavior known as geophagy, they can also be seen eating muddy clay along the riverbanks. A rather odd scene, a bird eating mud. But it is believed to help the macaw digest harsh, toxic plant matter that's in their diet. 
And with as much rainwater that flows through the Amazon, the muddy clay of riverbanks is never too hard to find. During the heavy seasonal rainfall, roughly 150,000 square miles of the Amazon becomes a floodplain forest as the rivers overflow. These floodplains stretch about 12.5 miles from the banks of the overwhelmed rivers. Soon, soil begets rain, and pools of water fill each crevice, each anthill, each rolling pocket of alluvium. The Amazon, surfeit with unrelenting downpour of this changing season, will accept its recurring cycle. What was once the high branches of a curling bombacacia tree will become the low-hanging, flowering foliage just above the water's surface of a flooded forest. At the bank of a slow-moving river, what was once the forest floor, mud and debris churn in the frothy stew of water. Out further into the riverbed, a passing sheet of rain riddles the water's surface. Pock marks of droplets cast ripples in circular patterns, each shifting shape colliding with the one beside it. Each quiver of water takes a moment to discern between a droplet of water and the small movements of mammals. At the horizon, no opposite riverbank can be seen, where the width of this river is beyond line of sight. The Amazon River is the largest river on the planet. At the beginning of its long journey through the continent of South America, it flows down from the Andes Mountains, where it meanders west through six countries before finally emptying into the Atlantic Ocean. Although once believed to flow from west to east millions of years ago, the formation of the Andes Mountains caused the river to reverse its course. 4,000 miles of winding turns and undulating pathways make up this astounding river, and its flow contributes to more than 1,000 tributaries that flow throughout northern and central South America. During the seasons of heavy rain, the width of the Amazon River can expand up to 30 miles, creating new waterways for various aquatic life. Near the surface of this murky river swims a seven-foot creature tinged with gray and dons a pink underbelly. A pointed snout juts from its bulbous head, and two recessed eyes mark the end of its subtle smile. Small but sharp teeth line its skinny mouth, a perfect tool for catching fish and other aquatic creatures who share the river. Underwater, a quiet sound of static can be heard, emanating from the creature's large head. The sound of echolocation. The pink dolphin is the largest of all the river dolphins and is categorized as a species of toothed whale. Its name comes from the light hue of pink that is seen, but not always, on various parts of the skin. Although it isn't known exactly why these creatures are pink, it might be due to their capillaries being located close to the skin's surface, or abrasions from intraspecies aggression, or perhaps a way of blending in with the red-colored mud that flows throughout the Amazon. Regardless of mystery, these dolphins are known to be exceptionally intelligent creatures and can engage to some degree in abstract thought similar to humans. They swim the rivers and tributaries in search of food and mates. The pink dolphin is not only threatened by the constant deforestation of the Amazon, but also by the contamination of mercury from illegal mining operations. Luckily, no matter how murky their rivers might become, their small beady eyes are of little use to the pink dolphin, since they use echolocation to navigate the waters. Yet their sources of food are greatly impacted by river contamination. Catfish and other bottom-feeding species in which the pink dolphins feed on are becoming harder and harder to find, even in the overabundant wet season when the rivers and tributaries expand. During the season of heavy rain, although the flooding of an area might at first appear disastrous, many benefits flow from the outpouring rivers. Rich sediment flows from the Andes Mountains, resulting in various ecosystems and habitats rather than deter various plants and animals from making these yearly floodplains their home, the water overwhelmingly welcomes them. As is the case for a multitude of ecosystems, climate change threatens the seasonal rainfall of which many of these plants and animals rely on for survival. Higher temperatures result in changing precipitation patterns, bringing dry spells and warmer weather, which in turn bring the threat of forest fires, fires that are often started with the intention of clearing forest for various uses, 
such as agriculture or ranching. A crucial number of species rely on this rainfall's consistency every year, most certainly the animals of the floodplains. Before the heavy rainfall season, where once a long-nosed armadillo scampered across fertile ground, with a billowed belly filled with air, he now swims across a lengthy bed of water, his shell hard yet smooth. He paddles to whichever high ground remains in search of his next meal of crickets and ants. Not alone, there are others below him, swimming in the cloudy shallows. Aquatic animals such as the manatee, with small puckered eyes following a downturned nose, can now search the newest waterways for food, only available to them now as the rivers grow during the rainy season. Within the warm waterways of a shallow river, a giant gray mob of fish swarm the currents. Their scales glisten along the bank, and each glint makes up a thousand shining dots through the murky waters of sediment. Beyond their massive clan, they scan the waters for any sign of movement, the wince of an insect near the surface, or the sway of underwater vegetation. The slow moving waterways in the Amazon have opened up, revealing new feeding grounds for the thousands of new visitors. With such a wide distribution of water across the land, as the rivers swell in the rainy season, the currents only move at a measly four miles per hour. This gives many of the aquatic creatures free reign to travel among most, if not all, of the waterways across the rainforest. Despite their dopey faces and their small bodies, once these fish open their mouths to eat, their razor-sharp teeth connected to their strong jaws might tell another story. From the Brazilian language of Tupi, these fish were named by combining two words, para, meaning fish, and sana, meaning tooth. The piranha fish are native to the freshwaters of South America, where they travel in dense packs up to 1,000. The younger and weaker of the pack shelters themselves in the center while the stronger create a barrier on the outside. In order to keep their teeth sharp throughout the season, they are known to shed their old ones as they dole over time, and they can be found scattered across the Amazon waterways. And then they regrow newer, sharper ones in their place. Contrary to popular belief, as these fish are often depicted in movies and television as vicious man-eating carnivores who shred their victims down to the bone in a matter of seconds. Most of the piranhas of the Amazon are simple omnivores. They feast on small insects, worms, seeds, and plants. Only when a larger animal is dead or dying would they consider eating a bird or a mammal of greater size. Some species of piranha are even herbivores and stick to the ample supply of vegetation provided by the Amazon. Their teeth and jaws are meant for efficiency rather than violence and their power in packs more often acts as a form of defense rather than an aggression. They swim the various channels of the Amazon in search of simple foods and a simple life. And for them, the splash of a human leg in nearby waters isn't seen as fresh meat for the eating, but rather a sign of danger. They are more likely to be hunted for their rich delicacies and plucked for their extraordinary teeth and set in a jar of some Brazilian tourist trap. On the bank of the flooded river, the snout of a jaguar emerges. Although a typical house cat might avoid pools of water at all costs, these South American cats of the Amazon have learned to thrive within a climate of overbearing water. One of the largest predators around, a single jaguar needs about 180 square miles of rainforest to survive. A spotted coat of camouflage rises from the flood. Its damp coat hangs on the cat with a heavy weight. Its shadowy ribcage indicates hunger, yet he often waits until night to hunt, to catch his prey off guard. The term jaguar, or jaguar, in Native American tongue, literally translates to he who kills in one leap. Adapting to the rainforest, he has learned to not only hunt on land, but within the water as well. For he is the apex predator of the rainforest. Death awaits many at the tooth end of a jaguar. Yet this jungle cat is necessary in keeping the balance of populations within the ecosystem of the Amazon 
as is often the role for a predator, so high on the food chain. With gaudy paws, the jaguar prances along the bank until its spotted figure vanishes like a ghost into the green thicket awaiting nightfall. And not far, never far, with a silent surrender to the chorus of the forest, another apex predator, a black caiman crocodile floats gently between the tree trunks of the flooded forest. Unseen by many, she slowly approaches the riverbank in search of food. Her eyes and nostrils sit at the top of her head, giving her the ability to sink as far down into the cloak of water as possible. Another species highly dependent on the flooded areas of the Amazon basin, the black caiman needs the rivers to raise her young. The female lays her eggs at the end of the dry season, so the newborn hatchlings will enter the world during the wet season, a perfect environment to raise them, since much of their lives are spent searching for food along the riverbanks. Subtle movements guide her through the water. Her slitted eyes peek just above the surface, while the rest of her 11-foot body floats just below. Covered in tough, black scales, she is difficult to see in the murky water as she waits and waits. In the hunting days of the dry season, she had limited time while hunting. Every moment away from her unguarded clutch of eggs, she knew they were susceptible to predators. But during the wet season, she has all the time in the world. On the riverbank, she spots her prey. The long-nosed armadillo approaches the water's edge for a drink. She turns to stone and waits for the armadillo to move within her grasp as all subtlety subsides in one violent thrash. With one lunge wreaking havoc, water splashing, blood draws from her meal. She chews and swallows the armadillo in a few swift motions. Her hunger finally satiated. And not long after, with a full belly, she returns to her familiar milieu, a floating silently along the water, until her next unfortunate prey needs another drink from the riverbank. If the black caiman weren't formidable enough, an even larger, more terrifying creature controls the waterways of the Amazon rainforest, one that can easily strangle an adult caiman to death. Slithering through the water with incredible ease in search of anything with a beating heart, built of pure muscle cloaked in camouflage scales, its slitted eyes navigate the dingy waters of the Amazon tributaries. The giant anaconda leaves terror in its wake, and its wake is undeniably large, capable of growing to the length of a school bus, and weighing as much as half a ton. The giant anaconda tears through the riverbed at up to 10 miles per hour. Its body is so large, its wake can be seen from far above, as if an airboat had just passed through. Similar to the black caiman, the giant anaconda primarily feeds on small mammals traveling too close to the water's edge, as well as the occasional larger prey such as a deer, a capybara, and a black caiman. They also, like the black caiman, have their eyes and nose positioned towards the top of their heads so they can keep watch of the riverbanks as they breathe and wait for unsuspecting prey. When they lurch towards their prey, Large fangs protract from their mouths, and since their ultra-sharp teeth are angled backwards towards their mouth, once they get a hold of their prey, it becomes extremely difficult, if not impossible, for their prey to escape their clutches. Aside from their unusual diet, if desperation so calls for it, the anaconda is also known to engage in cannibalism. Although rare, Cannibalism among anacondas mostly occurs postpartum, after a female's gestation period, since their hunger during the stage is at an all-time high. Their need to recover much of their energy, after much focus on their pregnancy, leads the larger female to intense hunger. By sheer convenience, their male partner is often the closest source of food. Without much thought of a romantic investment, and without the need of a father figure to raise their young, the male becomes nothing more than a delicious dinner. The female anacondas dwarfs the size of the male, 
so overpowering them is a simple task. After a large meal of their now insignificant partner, the low metabolism rates of the giant anaconda will keep them full and content for weeks at a time, maybe even months. Aside from the incredibly terrifying creatures who reside in and around the Amazon rivers, not everyone lives to invoke fear and horror within the rainforest. Some in fact resemble such divine qualities that they are named after religious figures. Upon the water surface of the flooded forest walks a small lizard, upright with two feet through wind and rain. Ripples of footprints fade behind it, a feat of nature so miraculous it could be called a biblical phenomenon. Although he has no beard, no apostles beside him, this lizard has been given the nickname the Jesus Christ Lizard as it runs across the water's surface. This is no mere illusion, nor is it an achievement of divine power. The basilisk lizard uses its large hind feet to run across water and its tail as a counterweight. Growing no more than two and a half feet, these lizards are light enough and strong enough to propel themselves across the water without sinking. They typically only do this when escaping the dangers of a nearby predator, and with enough momentum, they can run across a body of water up to 65 feet across. With countless predators among the rainforest, this basilisk lizard has adapted to traverse the waters like none other. And for a region as waterlogged as the Amazon, the ability to run across water gives this lizard just the edge it needs to survive. Dusk approaches. Flooded lagoons scattered along the edges of the rainforest culture various animals and flora, some of which change only at night. Small dots of white and pink appear just above the water's surface, just above the circular beds of the largest single leaf on the planet. These giant water lily leaves grow 10 inches per day and are large enough to support up to 130 pounds. Much of the lagoon's activities depend on these buoyant water beds, from sunbathing spots for crocodiles to fishing platforms for herons. As the sun disappears behind the horizon, the flower buds of giant water lilies reveal themselves from their giant buds and open their petals in the coolness of night, some pink and some white. Their internal temperatures of the flowers remain 10 degrees higher than the surrounding air, causing them to open. In the bright hum of insects, the pineapple scent of the white flower attracts a small scarab beetle which crawls inside the shelter of the giant flower. Fortunately for the lilies, this scarab beetle carries the pollen of a pink petal, or the male, and now pollinates the female, continuing the cycle. Night falls upon the rainforest. A soft rain cascades through the leaves above, and droplets fall from one leaf to the next. Some animals have returned to their shelter to rest, while others lay in wait. The fruit bat awakes to the hunt of a sweet berry. The jaguar's eyes widen with night vision, and the honey bear yawns as it wakes to search the sweets of a nearby hive. Deep within the nook of a hollow tree, a huddle of hairy bodies awakens. Cramped into the ceiling of their hollow hole, they stretch their leathery wings and wake their brothers and sisters beside them. And one by one, they take flight through the small mouth of their home into the darkness of the forest, blind and silent. Vampire bats always hunt under the cover of night without much need for eyesight. They use low-energy sound pulses to map and maneuver throughout the foliage of the forest in search of the blood of mammals. The aptly named vampire bat evolved exclusively to live off of the blood of another animal, a strategy most commonly found in parasites. Using their infrared-sensitive receptors located on their nose, the vampire bat can locate the warmest areas of a mammal's skin and target that area for the most blood. And luckily for these vampire bats, they have found within the wide clearing of a destroyed forest, a cattle ranch not far from their home. They fly over the clearing in search of their late night snack. The dots of sleeping cows mark the field, and each bat must choose their prey. 
They attack from a low trajectory, and once they land on their prey, they use their sharp teeth to shave down the fur of their chosen meal. Once down to the skin, they pierce the tissue with their sharpest fangs and drink an ounce of blood, a meal which takes them about 20 minutes to consume. Warm and appetizing, they drink the blood while hanging from the coat of the cow. Helpless and tired, she whips her tail at a biting fly and stumbles in a waking dream. As the bat feeds, an anticoagulant within the bat's saliva travels into the wound, preventing the cow's blood from clotting. So the wound won't begin to heal until the bat finishes its meal. Once done, they pull their fangs from the skin release their prey, jump into the air, and backtrack through their trees, back to their home. Although change has quickly settled upon their habitats in the season of heavy rain, these animals welcome the rain, the flood, and the next season of nature's cycle that maintains the balance of this vast and complicated rainforest. What they cannot account for is the continuation of the destruction of their habitats in the wake of deforestation that threatens the lives of countless species. Those whose very existence depends upon the trees of the extraordinary yet vulnerable Amazon rainforest. And that ends our journey to the Amazon rainforest for now. Hopefully you found this episode relaxing or even better Hopefully this episode puts you to sleep. If you manage to stay awake to the end, I hope you learned a thing or two about the beautiful Amazon rainforest. If you enjoyed this episode of the podcast, I invite you to subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, follow us on Spotify, and for a visual version of the show, check out our YouTube channel. But that's all for now. I hope you will join me on our next journey to Planet Sleep.